G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself. Well, our old friends at the WHO are up to it again. Now, colluding, of course, with John Hopkins and the usual characters like Bill Gates and so forth, they're planning the next pandemic. Now, we saw back in 2019 that they had one of these uh, you know, pandemic games kind of thing where they you know, had a scenario come out about that it was going to be a pandemic and exactly how it occurred and all that sort of stuff and they were planning for it and then lo and behold it happened and we had you know the COVID pandemic right now they're doing exactly the same thing again but this time around they're telling us that it's going to be much much worse now they have got a scenario that's going to occur um, where basically that obviously there's going to be an outbreak um, supposedly coming from Brazil and uh, you know everybody's going to catch it and it's going to be really really deadly and uh, but this time around it's going to target the children now they've had a video that they've put out you know showing how that they're going to you know plan for this sort of stuff and that more planning needs to be done essentially the video they've put out uh, is a guideline as to how things should be responded to you see they're still pressuring governments and corporations and you know industries and all this sort of stuff pressuring it to make sure that everybody is ready for the next outbreak and uh, that preparedness is what it's all about now i'll show you this quick clip so you can sort of catch up and see what i'm talking about officials in two latin american countries alerted the who of several outbreaks of a new infectious disease that's mysteriously appearing across the region severe epidemic enterovirus respiratory syndrome 2025 over the past six weeks alone there have been 500 confirmed or suspected cases reported the virus could cause a severe pandemic if early containment and mitigation efforts are not successful the pandemic could this type of situation and trend uh, would be a risk for the global health security. Pandemics are inherently political, financial, and so much broader. We have not spoken on the leadership in the country. And I think that we need to be also very careful. We cannot decide a lot of things without the leaders be involved and agree on that. There is no substitute for national leadership. It's important to support the local response or the national response. Training those that are in these areas first, enabling them with the tools, protecting them, and if needs be, regional solidarity first. At this stage, communication is key, and communication should include not just scientists with data, but also social, religious, and political leaders. Trust. This is an essential issue, and trust was broken among countries, between populations and healthcare systems, between healthcare systems and governments. I'm very sorry to say that in uh, 2025, we need to strengthen the health system. WHO needs to be a voice for the voiceless. No one is safe until all of us are safe. As of today, there have been an estimated 1 billion cases worldwide, with more than 20 million deaths, including nearly 15 million children. Countless are alive but left with paralysis or brain damage. The most successful countries are those which invested in preparedness and trained for this moment years in advance. This included having full-time pandemic preparedness and response teams which conducted detailed operational planning and routinely tested those plans through exercises and drills. If more countries had participated and heeded the guidance, the toll might have been much less. So there you have it. This is what they're you know, telling everybody that uh, will happen and that uh, we need to be prepared for it. Well, you know, that sort of sounds a little bit strange, doesn't it? How, uh, you know, throughout, uh, as long as I've been alive, we've never seen these kinds of things being talked about or prepared for. And especially, you know, five minutes before we actually have an outbreak. But this is exactly the agenda, isn't it? Just a little while ago, you had Bill Gates come out and say that this will be the decade of vaccines. So. You know, there's obviously an agenda there. But what I do find very interesting about this is that they are saying that it's going to be extremely severe for children. Yeah, surprise, surprise, right? Now, whether this actually occurs or not, we'll just have to wait and see, of course. But, uh, you know, I would not be surprised if we do see yet another outbreak. It was just a few weeks ago we saw 
scientists manipulating the coronavirus and making it even more deadly. Yeah, because that's what you do, right? You find something that uh, is a bit of a problem and then you just make it even worse. But that's what scientists do these days, apparently. They don't seem to fix anything or cure anybody or get rid of these problems. They just create more and make them more deadly. But something else that's very, very interesting about this supposed next outbreak is that it is going to be, of course, a respiratory issue and it will be contracted. And, uh, you know, around about 20 million people are going to die from it. And uh, as I said, most of those will be children. They're also saying that about a billion people will actually catch it. And, uh, but most of those uh, will suffer the consequences of not dying, but uh, paralysis and brain damage. Yes, that sounds really good, doesn't it? So uh, if you're not actually dead from it, then uh, you're going to be a complete mong. But whether this actually happens or not, well, like I say, we have to wait and see. Uh, but uh, they do tend to tell us what they're up to before they do it for some reason. Don't really know why they do that. Uh, maybe it gives them uh, more time to discredit people who are stepping up against it. Uh, you know, people like myself who are going to talk about these things. And uh, obviously over time they will make an effort to make sure that nobody pays attention to us. But uh, should these things uh, you know, come along, then we see a lot of problems happening. Uh, I often wonder if it's not the fact that you know there's so many people who are already suffering from all sorts of damage from the previous round of medication that uh, we've just endured. Uh, we're seeing a lot of problems coming out of that and a lot of uh, untold truths also coming out. Um, you know, the so-called conspiracy theories about all of this stuff has been proven quite right and there is a lot of issues around it that uh, you know, we said there was a problem and that it wasn't a good thing and sure enough it's coming out that it's not. Now we've seen things like defibrillators being put all over the place these days uh, even on street corners <laughs> to make sure that uh, everybody's got a defibrillator around them close to them because heart attacks are so prevalent these days but uh, nobody's really paying too much attention to that because you know everybody has heart attacks right everything causes heart attacks especially climate change that's a big one for heart attacks but I do wonder if uh, we're not going to see some sort of um, you know, result from what's been already occurring and uh, yeah see if these people start dropping dead just for no apparent reason but um, yeah we're already seeing that aren't we so with this new one that they're talking about coming which is supposed to be around about 2025 and uh, I, know, I expect a lot of people would have kind of forgotten about what's been happening over the last few years by then because you know people's memories are pretty bad these days they seem to forget things very quickly um, extremely quickly in fact and uh, that's why we see things like uh, you know Daniel Andrews getting re-elected down in Victoria they forgot about all those things that he did and things that he said but sure enough you know there it is but that's the problem we're suffering these days isn't it a lot of people agree with this kind of tyranny and uh, you know as long as it's not affecting them and they get to stay home and do whatever they want um, and get paid for it you know they'll go along with it no worries and I think that's really why uh, a lot of Australians went along with it because they got to do nothing and sit at home and you know drink beer or do whatever it is they do at home and it didn't really affect them and this is also why we're not seeing much of an outcry with a lot of other things that are happening here in Australia because the crunch really hasn't come yet uh, the prices of things are going up and it's just the very lower incomes that are, are suffering but the majority of people aren't in there with that uh, category in Australia, so they haven't really suffered that much yet. But should we see a new pandemic come along? Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to make sure that this one's a lot worse than the previous one, because uh, there is an agenda to reduce the number of people around the world, that's for sure. And uh, we'll see what happens with it. But I, for one, simply won't be joining in. I, s I still haven't had a jab yet, and I still haven't had COVID. I must be like a miracle or something, you know. Uh, how many of you guys out there haven't had a jab and haven't had contracted COVID? It'll be interesting to see. But uh, I know that uh, I've never had any of these problems, but I definitely see a lot of people around me still contracting it. And even though they are triple jabbed and boosted and all the rest of it, they're still you know, getting this problem cropping up. We even saw it with Albanese just the other day, who uh, had to quarantine himself because he'd gotten himself COVID yet again. It's the second time as far as I know. And, uh, you know, he's had all of his jabs and his boosters and all the rest of it. But it's back to that same old story, isn't it? Would have been a lot worse if he hadn't had the jabs. Probably didn't catch it at all, really. It was just an excuse for him to take his time off. 
so we can push this legislation through about energy and all the rest of it before Christmas, you know, rush, 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 and uh, you know, squeeze the amount of time down to nothing where things have to get done uh, so nobody can talk about it and then Christmas comes along and end the story, right? But this is all what's going on and we do have to keep a very, very close eye on what is actually happening because if you're not up to date and you don't realise uh, that this plan is still unfolding, um, you might get caught up in it. Then it's pretty obvious to see that uh, you know, if a worse scenario pandemic comes along, they're going to crank up the fear and uh, kids dropping dead all over the place. Because you remember when they came out last time, they said that it's not a problem for children and it's not severe in children and all this sort of stuff. But yeah, they still locked them up and masked them and all this sort of stuff. But um, you know, this time around it will be that, uh, you know, if you're not looking after your kids and getting the jab and all that sort of stuff, well, they might just take your kid away. We did see children getting removed from parents over in New Zealand just the other day because they didn't want to have contaminated blood put into their baby while it was having a heart operation. So just think what it's going to be like. You see, they are pushing and pushing for this pandemic preparedness, and that's really what it comes down to with all of these um, scenarios that they make up like this practice run that they're talking about with this video that I've just showed you. Uh, it's about making sure that uh, the system is set in place. And obviously a lot of the systems that they have in place didn't work and some did work and it was a beta test for how far or how much they could get away with really, wasn't it? It wasn't a case of them actually uh, just bringing in these systems and leaving them there. It was a case of actually trying to figure out which ones they could bring in and which would be resisted and what they'll need to do the next time around to make sure that everybody does exactly what they're told. So you can pretty well guarantee that by the time the next one comes around, that is the pandemic of the future, that they're going to be well ready and practiced to make sure that everybody complies exactly to what they want.